Hi, this is the second video of the mechanics playlist and in this video I will be going over rotational motion using four different mechanical components. Before I show these mechanisms, let me explain to you the main concepts like I did in the previous video. So previously, we know that linear motion is usually from one point A to point B um, and you usually make a linear or a straight vector to that point. Um, in this case, the new concept here, rotational motion, is some um, some type of motion that rotates about an axis. So in this case, um, this green point here is rotating about the z-axis, and usually it rotates about the axis, uh, the three three main axes, x, y, uh, and z. But it could also rotate about a custom vector that you create. So if you make one between x. Um, X and Y, it could rotate about that. So just any type of rotation about one axis. So this is another one here. Um, that's what rotational motion is. So let's get into the actual uh, mechanisms. Um, the first one I'll be showing you is the most basic one. Uh, it's basically the it's basically direct motor drive. So all motors pretty much um, rotate. The it has um, some type of enclosure and then that enclosure has some type of shaft. So if you look at this NEMA 17 motor here It has an enclosure and then a shaft sticking out and the and when it's powered the shaft here rotates and So direct motor drive essentially you're attaching whatever you need to be rotated onto the shaft and as you power the motor the actual uh, device that's attached to the shaft rotates um, so um, basically our actual rover wheels um, mimic this uh, same mechanism so obviously wheels you need them to rotate so um, this assembly is a little bit broken but essentially um, you have a wheel here with a specific mount that mount attaches onto this gearbox and this gearbox is attached onto a motor which isn't here at the moment uh, it looks something like this here so gearbox and then motor um, gearbox just lets you provide uh, more torque uh, from the motor because most motors don't have that much torque but yeah we'll get into that in another video um, but for now first mechanism is just direct gear drive the second one is uh, belt driven so in the previous video you saw that belt driven could be used for linear motion but it could also be used for rotational motion so in this case it would be used in a situation where you don't want the motor to be directly mounted onto whatever you want to rotate and if you want to mount the system um, a distance away from the motor so in this case we mounted the motor separately from the actual device that we're rotating and it still works um, just the only difference is that the motor is separate from the actual mechanism so as the motor rotates with the pulley the belt obviously uh, turns the other pulley it's connected to, and as that turns, it uh, rotates the actual mechanism. Um, we could also see this here uh, in a design that Alec made. Um, essentially, he's using one motor to drive two systems. So you could also use uh, belts to drive multiple um, things at once, so rotate two things at the same time. So if you see here, as I rotate one, or as this motor or pulley rotates once, it's rotating both systems at the same time. So that's one way to use uh, belt and pulleys. All right. Uh, the third system you've most likely seen them uh, on a bicycle. It's basically the exact same thing as a uh, pulley. The only difference is you're using sprockets and chains. So the way your bikes work. Essentially, the pedals are attached to a smaller sprocket, and as you uh, start pedaling, it rotates that sprocket, which is connected via chain to the back wheel, which also has a big sprocket, um, and that's basically how a bike works, um, and it's the equivalent to a belt and, um, belt and pulley. The only difference is chains are a little bit more heavy-duty. They don't flex. They don't wear out as much as uh, belts. Um, it just depends on your application. Um, it's more for larger industrial um, heavy uh, components, not not too much 
uh, with robotics. Uh, the third component here is simple gear drive. So say that this um, claw that I have here, I only want to connect one of the gears to a motor, but I still want both claws to close. So in this case, I have um, each claw connected to a gear. And when you rotate one gear, it rotates the second one that's connected to in the opposite direction, which allows us to open and close this claw here. So if you see here, the gears mesh together. Um, gear mechanisms are pretty simple depending on what type of gears you use. In this case, this is a one-to-one -one gear ratio, so they'll move one-to-one, -one, so uh, both at the same speed. Um, and yeah, that's pretty simple uh, used in specific applications. If you remember in the last video um, with the lead screw design when we drive the nut, we actually use a gear drive. All right, and the last mechanism. So if you know a little bit about cars and car engines, they actually have a um, system just like this. It's essentially, it's called a slider crank system. Um, for a car, it's a piston rod system. Essentially what happens is this here would be the piston. When you push it down, if you see it put, rotates this circle here, so push it all the way down, goes all the way to this point, and then when you rotate it back up, it does a full rotation onto this uh, wheel here. So if you see, as it goes up and down, it actually rotates the mechanism. So you're converting linear motion to rotational. Um, this isn't used much in what we use today for robotics, but this is uh, a prime and key mechanism used for car engines. All right, that was the last mechanism. I hope you enjoyed the video and you're able to grasp the workings behind these mechanisms. I'll see you in the next one.